We have included for your convenience in the program some helpful information, including characters that go by various names, if you like to do that, and a synopsis. Now we'd like to give a little historical context, seeing as this is one of Shakespeare's histories. This show takes place roughly 20 years after the events of Shakespeare's Richard II, where the then Henry Bolingbroke, now King Henry of Henry IV, deposed King Richard II and over a property dispute. Now, some of the lords who were very loyal to Henry at that time have turned on him because he has failed to deliver on certain promises that he made them at the time. If that wasn't bad enough, his son, the heir to the throne, Prince Hal, has fallen in with a gang of thieves and drunkards. That takes us to the beginning of our show. Sit back.
you to leave us. When we have need of your counsel, we shall send for you. You were about to speak. Yea, my good lord. Those prisoners in your highness's name commanded, which Harry Percy here at Holden took were, as he says, not with such strength and I as is delivered to your majesty. I would envy, therefore, or misprison is guilty of this fault, and not my son. My liege, I should deny the prisoners, but I remember when the fight was done, when I was dry with rage, extreme toil, preface, and faint leaning upon my sword, came there a certain lord, neat and trim towards, fresh as a rifle, and his chin, newly rich, showed like stubble land in father's home. He was perfumed like a milliner, and twixt his finger and thumb, he held a pounce of box, whichever or not he gave his nose in. Took away, who there were angry when next he came, took in snuff. And still he smiled and talked, and as the soldiers bore dead bodies by, he called them untaught names, unmanned, to bring a slovenly, unhandsome corpse betwixt the wind and his nobility. With many holiday and lady terms questioned me, amongst the rest commanded my prisoners in your majesty's account. I, all smarting with my wounds being cold, to be so pestered with a pot, and my grief and my patience answered neglecting me, I know not what he should or he should not, or he made me mad, to shine so brisk and smell so sweet and talk so like a waiting gentleman of guns and drums and wounds. Go to say no And telling me that the softest thing on earth was upon the setting for an inward group, and that it was a great pity, so it was, that the villainous salt Peter should be so digged out of the bowels of the harmless heart, which many a good tall fellow had destroyed so cow. And but for these vile guns, he would himself have been a soldier. This ball on George Shat is my lord, I answer indirectly as I've said, and I beseech you, let not his report concur for an accusation between my love. Your high majesty. The circumstance considered, good my lord, whatever Lord Harry Percy then had said to such a person in such a place, at such a time with all the rest we told, they reasonably died and never did rise to do any wrong when he went each. What then he said shall be unsaid now. Why, that he doth deny his prisoners, but with proviso and exception, that we at our own charge shall ransom straight his brother in law, the foolish mortal, who on my soul. Hath willfully betrayed the lads of those that he did lead to fight against that great magician, Sam Splendor, whose daughter, as we hear, Lord Mortimer hath lately married. Shall our coffers then be empty to redeem a traitor home? Shall we but treason and indented fears when they have lost and forfeited themselves? No. On the barren mountains let him stop. For I shall never hold that man, my friend, whose tongue shall ask me for one penny cost to ransom home to Bolton Mortimer. Bolton Mortimer! He did ever fall off my leash by the chance of war. Proof that no, the no, no wound means more than the tongue for all these wounds. These not the wounds which valiantly he took in single opposition, fighting hand in hand, he did confound the better part of an hour with great plunder. And let him not be slandered with revolt. Thou dost belie him, Percy. Thou dost belie him. Did he count with Glendower? I tell you, he durst have well as met the devil alone as Owen Glendower for him. I am not ashamed. But, Sirrah, henceforth let me not hear you speak of him. Send me your prisoners with the speediest means, or you shall hear from me in such a kind as will displease you. And Lord Northumberland, we license your departure with your son. Send us your prisoners, or you will hear of Could be 
proved that some nitrobate fairy had in crater clothes exchanged them where they lie and called mine Percy his plantain. Then when I had this happened, he mine. But let's him from my thoughts. And if the devil comes forth, then he shall not have it. I'll straight after your toes, so in East Mark, I'll be like a hazard of my head. What trumpet coward? Stay in pause a while. Uh, here comes your uncle. Speak of more sounds. I will speak with him, and let my soul have mercy if I do not join with him. Yea, on his part, I have all my blood drop by drop in the dust, but I will raise a down trot mortar as high in the air as this ungrateful king, as this ingrate, and take your glory to walk. Brother, the king hath made your nephew mad. You struck this heat up after I was gone. You will pursue have all my prisons, and when I urge ransom once again on my wife's brother, then his cheek looked pale, and on my face he turned an eye of death, trembling, even at the name of Mortimer. I cannot blame him. Was he not proclaimed the next blood by the dead King Richard? He was. Myself did hear it. And it was when the unhappy king, whose wrongs in us God pardoned, we did intercept and shortly murder. And for whose death we in the world's wide mouth have scandalized, foully spoken of. So, I pray you, did not then King Richard proclaim my brother Edmund Mortimer heir to the crown? He did. Myself did hear it. Nay, then I cannot blame his cousin King that wished him on the barren of its star. Oh, pardon me that I have sent so low to show the lion and predicament where you range under this subtle king. Shall it for shame be spoken of in these days with both of you, God pardon have done, to put down that sweet, lovely rose Richard, and in its place plant this thorn, this king of Bolingbroke? And shall it be further shame be spoken of into a fool, discarded and shook off by this same king of whom these shame death away? No. Time serves, where you may redeem your banished honors into the world again. Reject revenge, the jeering and disdain to temper this proud king, who studies day and night to answer all the debts he owes to you, even with the bloody repayment of your debts. Therefore, I say Please, cousin, say no more. I cry and mercy. now, I will pass the secret for good cousin, any audience for a while. I cry for mercy. Those same noble Scots that are your prisoners. You shall not have a Scot of them. No, if a Scot would save his soul, he shall not. Keep them by his hand. Start away. And lend over your arms to my purposes. Those prisoners you shall keep. Yeah, I will. That's flat. He forbade my tongue to speak of Mortimer, said he would not hear of Mortimer, but I'll find him where he lies asleep. And in his ear, I'll have a murder! No! Hey, I'll have a parrot to speak nothing but Mortimer and give it to him to keep his anger still in motion. Hear you, cousin. A word. All studies here I saw me. I see a gall and pinch this boy book. And, and that same sword and buckle of Prince of Wales, but that I think his father loves him not and would be glad I poisoned him with a part of him. God, I can't be done. Who knows how you would say? Nay, not to it again. He will stay in your leisure. I've done it, Faith. Then once more to your Scotch prisoners. Deliver them up without the ransom street and make them the son of your only two towers in Scotland, which, for diverse reasons, as I will send you written. I smelt upon my leg and too well. Before the game is a foot, thou still let us slip. And in the power of Scotland and of York to join with Mortimer, And so they shall. In faith, it's exceedingly well aimed. It is a little reason bids us to save our hands by raising our head. For, fair as it we can, the king loves things in our debt. And see already how he doth begin to make strangers to his looks of love? He does. He does and will be revenged on him. Cousin, farewell. No further go in this than I, by letters, will bring the force. When the time is right, we shall be suddenly. All sails blend out in the morning, when you and Douglas all our powers at once, as I, in fashion, shall happily meet, to bear our fortunes in our own strong arms, which now we live much in certainty. Farewell, good brother. We shall thrive, I trust. A who? A two. Oh. That the hours be short of feats and blows and groans of blood.
And do thou never leave off calling Francis, so that her story to me shall be nothing more than a novel. Stand aside, I'll show you precedent. Francis! Oh, our perfect! Francis! Do not an answer. Come hither, Francis. My lord? How long hast thou to serve, Francis? For six, five years, and as much Oh, Francis! An answer! Why, our lady, five years is a long lease for the clinging of pewter. But tell me, are thou not valiant enough to play coward to your indenture, show a fair pair of heels, and run from it? Lord's Herald, be sworn upon all the books in England, I can find it in my heart. Oh, Francis! Not so How old art thou, Francis? Uh, about what we see, about Michaelmas next, there shall be. Francis! Not a Christian one, my lord. Nay, but hark you, Francis. <laughs> <laughs> the sugar thou gavest me, twas a penny worth, was it not? Lord's Herald, what have you to? Ask me when thou wilt, and thou shalt have it. Francis! Anon, anon. Anon, Francis? No, Francis, but tomorrow, Francis, or Francis a Thursday, or Francis when thou wilt, but Francis! Wilt thou not rob this leather jerking crystal button, not painted agate ring, pew sucking, caddis guarded, smooth tongued Spanish pouch? Lord, sir, who do you mean? Oh, well then, the brown bastard is your only drink. For look you, your white canvas doublet will sully in Barbary cannot come to so much. What, sir? Francis! Uh, Francis, go! Do you not hear them all? Francis! Oh, Francis! <laughs> Do not beat the Adelaide with a dagger of laughs, and drive all thy subjects a 
a road by Rabbi Castle with a dozen of them two hours ago. I was eight times thrust in the doublet, four and through the holes. My buckler cut through and through. My sword hacked like a handsaw. more or less than true, then they are the villains and the sons of darkness. Well, speak, sirs, how was it? We three set upon some dozen. Sixteen at least, my lord. <laughs> and, and bound them. No, no, they're not bound. You don't think we're bound here again! <laughs> As we were sharing with some six or seven fresh men set upon us. And unbound the rest, then come me out of <laughs>
The lion will not touch the human friends. Instinct is a great matter. I was a coward on instinct. But for the rest of my life, I will think better of me and myself. Myself for a lion, <laughs> and thou for a true prince. But, lads, I am glad you have the money. Hostess, clap to the doors. Watch tonight. Pray tomorrow. Come, I'm come to say all titles of good fellowship be on you. Come, shall we have a play extemporary?
vanity in the ears. Wherefore is he good? But you taste no sack and drink it. <laughs> Wherein you clean and neat, but in carving a kitten's leg and you do it. Where in God, but in craft, where in craft, but in villainy, where in villainous, but in all things, where in worthy, but in nothing. <laughs> I'll have 
that so, a little change. Prince 
of my blood, hope and expectation of thy time is ruined. The soul of every man prophetically doth forthink thy fault. Thou hast lost thy princely privilege with vile participation. Not an eye but is weary of thy common sight, save mine, which had desired to see thee more. Which now doth that I would not have it do. Make blindness of the foolish tenderness. I shall hereafter, my thrice gracious Lord, be more myself. Come, Barbara. 
now, come sing me a body tune, make me merry. I have lent as virtuously as any man should be given. Swore not twice, but seven times a week. Went to a, uh, a body house in a quarter of an hour. Uh, I paid all money back three or four times. I lived in order, in good compass. And now I'm out of all order, out of all compass. Yes, Sir John, you are so fast. You must have lived out of all compass. Out of all compass. <laughs> Yeah. 
years ago, if you were say too long. Well, the latter end of a fray in the beginning of a feast, it's a dull fighter and a keen guest. Gracious office of the king. You guys say to be here in respect. Welcome, Sir Walter Blunt. And which God you were of our determination. Some of us love you well. And even though saying envy your good name and good service, because you are not about falling, but instead stand against us like an enemy. God defend us till I should stand so. So long out of the day to rule, you stand against the Lord's majesty. <laughs> but to my charge, the king has sent to know the nature of your griefs. With all speed, you shall have your desires with interest, and pardon absolutely for yourself and these here misled by your suggestion. Then the report. A short time after King Henry deposed the true king, there after deprived him of his life, and then amended that task of the whole state to make matters worse, suffered his kinsman mortal, who with every honorable hope placed indeed his king to be engaged in weapons, there without ransom to lie for Disgrace to me in my happy victory. Sought to entrap me by intelligence, raided my uncle from the council board, dismissed my father in rage from the court, broke both my mother, committed wrong on wrong. And in the net of that, drove us to seek out this head of Satan, a lot of pride in his title, which we find too indirect for long. Shall I return at this answer to the king? Not so, Sir Walter. Go to the king and let there be in pawns and surely you say to turn again. In the morning I will shall my uncle bring him our purposes. And so farewell. I would you would accept the praise of love. And maybe so we shall. Pray God. So 
be gone. You will not be troubled now with the lie. You offer fair. Take it advisedly. They will not accept.